Hello. Hi. Hi. Right. <laughs> yeah. So as you know, um, as part of UG Big Song Online, we're interviewing musicians around the Portsmouth area um, and sort of how they're dealing with the lockdown and what they've been up to and stuff in recent times. Um, so yeah, if you can start by saying your name and what you do, that'd be great. Yeah, my name's Flay Carpenter and I am a vocal tutor and member of the Urban Vocal Group. So I teach the Portsmouth Adults Group on a Wednesday in Portsmouth and I've previously taught um, both Portsmouth and have helped out at the Haven Groups as well. Cool. And then I just I do singing and performing as well <laughs> on day to day. And then I'm at Portsmouth College that. when I'm not doing that. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so if, uh, also you were a member of UVG. Um, you just found out earlier that it's like 10 years this month, which is mental. Yeah, um, yeah. How old are you when you joined UVG? Um, that requires maths, Lil. Must be been 11. 11, yeah, oh, yeah, 10 yeah. yeah, 11. Yeah, oh, yeah. crazy. I've known you. I remember well, the first day walking in. Yeah, that's mental. Um, do you remember why you joined UVG? Yeah, me auntie Karen and your mum. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, so, where we were at the were same singing, school. Yeah, you were singing before you joined UVG. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing, theater, wasn't it? Yeah, musical theatre um, with Jane Pegler, and I was a member of South Sounds Musical Society. Um, I just did my first show with them, which was Annie. Yeah. I've been doing musical theatre since I was younger. Um, my cousin did it, so I sort of just followed and loved it, really. And then, yeah, my auntie got speaking to your mum and said that her daughter runs a group and her other daughter goes to it and she sort of took me along one Monday. I went along and, yeah, never left. Never left. Never could. <laughs> do you remember, like, the, like, the first sort of feeling you got when walking into, like, UPG? Oh, I pooped my pants. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was just... I don't know, I was so nervous at that point of like just starting something new. I didn't really know what it would be like. And then, yeah, but I, I loved it after the first session. Mm. Actually, not even after the first session, during the first session, I was like, yeah, no, I love this. This is. I think, I think that's a case like yeah. most members though, is that as soon as you're in, it's like you've, you're in that sort of, because obviously you have different harmony groups and you find that sort of click mm. in the way and then you realise yeah. the different personalities there and that's what kind of makes it a bit special. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you find that UVG was different to the things that you've done before? Oh yeah. I think as soon as I walked in, it was just like a family feel, and everyone got on with each other. It wasn't, you know, certain groups can be really, I don't know what's the word, clicky and yeah. not in a horrible way, but you know, and I just felt as horrible as it sounds and cringy as it sounds, it just I just felt at home. I was I was there to do what I love doing and surrounded by people who love doing the same and yeah it was definitely different it was it was one of those special moments when you realize it's I, I remember when good. I was like 10 or 11 and I was like proper obsessed with Glee and mm. you know, too. and like all those different personalities coming in and we used to like sit yeah and I was like pretend I was Rachel Berry but like <laughs> well, that's the thing it was a bit like that wasn't it because it, it was, was just like, everyone mixing together yeah and obviously like you have school choirs and stuff which we were involved with too but yeah like, this was completely separate. We all come from different areas of Portsmouth. And yeah. Surrounding areas. And we all kind of just come together for this hour and a half to... I think that's what makes it so special, isn't it? Is that not one person in that room has the same background or the same story or we're all there for different reasons. And I think that that's the special part of it as well because it just unites people. Yeah, definitely. And you see that across both groups as well. I mean, from us teaching the adult groups, we see that that's, some just people come just for company. Some admit they're like I can't sing a note but I'm going to be here because I absolutely love it it's yeah. just that that togetherness I mean it, so. obviously because we've been here basically from the start with mm. UVG we've kind of seen all the major changes that have happened so like when we finally expanded to Portsmouth to the Guildhall yeah the Guildhall, and then the, the adult group sort of developed and were introduced as well and then we become a charity we've kind of experienced it all so what sort of like did, did you know that you wanted to carry on teaching or progress in terms of tutoring for UVG? Or was it something like really unexpected? I don't, do you know what? I, I wouldn't say that when I started, I knew that's where I was going to be. But I think it become, 
it, it became quite apparent because we were just I don't know I feel like we were in a sort of group where we just always wanted to push ourselves and yeah. you know all the extra opportunities you get and the chance to show what you want to do and the things we were involved in I mean I'm talking when we were like what 12 down the back of the billy track singing titanium and that to us at that time was like oh my god it's amazing we're doing our own music video and it's us justine and molly like absolutely love love but i don't know i just yeah i knew that i wanted to stick around i knew that i wanted to be involved in it i, I, I didn't to see where we are now with it but I, I wouldn't change it at all because i think we've been given so many countless opportunities for you oh, to I don't think we, we'd be where we are now without it. No, I was speaking to mum about this the other day. And, you know, was, I was saying about the whole, how I never thought that I would be like a tutor or a music leader. No. And I, can't, I just said to mum, I was like, I never really noticed the process because it was no. so, because I was, it was natural, it was home to me to be in that sort of environment that when I become that person, it just, all the in-between bits just kind of like, we're just but like don't you feel it just worked yeah like like the things that should have been a problem or was awkward it just didn't because i obviously yeah. I knew what uvg was i knew the foundations and i, knew I think that's what made it so good wasn't it for yeah. us doing that is because we knew it sorry i've got an itchy side because um, <laughs> we knew it like in inside out anyway we were doing it every single week sometimes twice a week and then when it was like do you want to run a group we were like all right Fuck, give it a go. Oh. <laughs> yeah try it it just works yeah do you remember your first gig with uvg and what it was oh is that a trick question i actually can't i think mine i think mine was having art center when i was not yeah i think you might have been part of that I remember doing one at Have an Art Centre. Yeah. I think, oh, I don't really know. I can't remember. We've done so many in the last few years. I know. If we look back, if we were in the office or something, we can look right back into like, the archive because we've got all the gig sort of stuff there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, we'll have to look into that one. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to know. Yeah, no. Do you, um, do you like, sort of, have, like, a favourite sort of memory of UBG or, like, a gig? Yeah. I've got quite a few. I think one of the like turning points for me in UBG was when we did the NHS Christmas party at the dockyard. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And Amber had literally forced me to sing Skyfall. And in rehearsals, I was like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do the high bits. Mm. And she was like, shut up, you can do it. And then I just remember, it was, so, I don't know why, but we hadn't gigged that much at that point and we had to like, all sneak in didn't we and we had to like walk through the tables and everyone was there and then I just had this massive fear of like walking and tripping over the tables <laughs> falling into like some surgeon's lap while he's eating his Christmas soup <laughs> like it was just such a big moment and then when we did it and it sounded great not me like the whole thing and everyone just came together and you just saw everyone sat there and I don't know why I don't know I think it's because they were like the NHS and I was like oh my god this is so cool yeah. um but that was great for me and then that was more of like a personal one just because it's like one of the first I did proper as a solo and then 10 year anniversary gig and the no, pyramids no, gig no. used to love them they they for me just signify everything that UVG's about and especially the, the hard work episodes we did um even like our first one at um, Wedge Dream mm. and then yeah. with pyramids we got to the guild hall for our 10th and all of them every single year was kind of like a moment to reflect of all yeah. of the achievements we had over the year um and one thing for me too is when we did breaking through back in 2017 yeah. and we got to pair up with like um mu like musicians and songwriters around portsmouth um and i think that was really an amazing time for us um because yeah because we obviously we were always in that environment, we were always around these people, but we never got the chance to do it just for ourselves. And also UBG gave us a sort of opportunity to be able to sit down, then get our songs out and actually have an amazing process whilst doing it and real professional recordings, promo, you know, mm. and end on the big show at the Wedge Rooms. I think that was yeah, I think for me too. That, 
you know, when you say gigs, obviously I think of like the little ones, and then when you think that, that for me was more of like a journey. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, I just remember us travelling up to that Southampton place where we did the breaking through. Yeah. And we were so nervous, you know, we, we hadn't done something like that properly before, and we didn't know what to expect, and we were with some people we knew and some strangers, and I mean, how funny was it when we had to walk around the room and just look at the wall with these pictures, and they were like, come up with a song, and we were like, um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah let's do that cool. <laughs> but then we actually thought about it and we did it I think the the special part for that for me and don't get a big head was doing that with you yeah I mean what a banger hill was <laughs> <laughs> that's not my UK top 40 but <laughs> <laughs> no I think it, we both had our own we both had our own special meanings of that song you know, yeah even if we look at it now and we we sort of like laugh about it and giggle about it I think at the time for us and a lot of people around us, our family, friends, people that understood, um, it, it was a really special chance. And I think we um we were close anyway, but I think we kind of we jowled loads, and obviously we got to record mm. it after and went for dinner and stuff. And yeah, you know, I, I think we become. I think that's the time, and I think I was fifteen, and you were sixteen or something, and we. Yeah. That's the time we sort of got really close. Um, yeah. And now we can't get rid of each other because no, no, you're like, well, we work with each other. Damn. No, no. Damn, for my life. No. Huh? Um, but yeah, no, it's, it is a bit mental. So what happened like when you left school? Because obviously you did um, music. Um, you did exams, didn't you? Yeah. So I, I'd been doing my exams for London College of Music. Um, with the University of West London um, so I started off doing my grades and I ended up doing my diploma when I was like 15 I was in my Absolutely. last year of school and it was like you like your little it was oh, in the news <laughs> yeah god oh, I remember that I just remember a news report turn up at the school and be like what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah um oh god that photo oh it gives me nightmares Will. Yeah, no, I, yeah, so I did that and then carried on and did my associate and then I've sort of stopped doing that for now because I think um, it's great yeah. and I've learnt so much and that part um, was more like looking at, obviously I did my performance side of it, but a lot of that was looking at technique and everything yeah. like that, vocal health, um, which linked in with Sally and the sing stuff because before I became a vocal tutor, I was a sing safe assistant. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I, I, again, linking them two together, I learned so much and was able to do so much with that, um, which I've sort of carried through in mm. any like teaching I've done. I since. think that's another thing too, with when we've become um, music leads, all the little things that you don't think are important and mm. all little tips and tricks that add up and just all yeah. of a sudden you've got that whole um music leader persona about you and it's just like it, you just don't realize it no i think um we've managed to do that pretty well <laughs> yeah um, considering we've had no real official training in teaching yeah in teaching music we've kind of just yeah, watched... it's not like you've done a course is it of no this no this is how you teach it no we've obviously been around influential people like amber and charlie but i've seen it firsthand i think that's mm. the whole point of it i mean it's been very practical and hands-on I think that's why. That's what I'd say to anyone: is the experience. Mm -hmm. you, you don't, and it's not me being biased, but you could go to any other. You know, you could just stick at junior school choir. You could go to any other thing, or just do a few vocal lessons here and there. The difference with UVG is the experiences you get from it. Yeah. You know, we do the master classes. We're always looking, and Charlie and Amber, we're always looking at ways to develop people. It was never just come and sing it's always like great okay but what can we do yeah and I remember those conversations of Charlie being like we want to support people into the music industry we want to help people support people mm. and we've been lucky to be on the side of that and now we're lucky to be delivering and developing the stuff for the other people now coming through and that's what linked in so well with the breaking through project you know yeah. you didn't just do something you took it you saw a real we had all the master classes with different people of okay well how do you produce your own music the social media what yeah. do you do with it how do you get yourself out there and I think it's just it's the whole package with UVG Definitely. I think you know you get everything 
really. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, what about like socially? Have you found that UVG's helped you, especially when you're a teenager and you have all the little anxieties of going out and going to a group of people or, you know, yeah. your school friends to go find some other group of people? Do you think that it's helped you socially in terms of that sort of thing? Yeah, more than I think I could ever sort of explain or be thankful for. With, yeah. You know, God, I'm sorry to stay, aren't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, my friends through UVG um I've become lifelong friends mm. if I look at it I've got such a solid support group around me from people that we either come to UVG or people we've met through UVG yeah and I think yeah I'm, I'm always grateful for that um because I, I wouldn't be where I am without some of those people yeah well. I mean, when I and again it, it just adds to it yeah when I look at it I think about the friendships that I've had or have currently at UVG is obviously we've got um, the ones who we grew up with, so like Josh yeah. and people like that. And then I also look at the adults we've made friends with from the adult groups. So yeah. it, like all, it all kind of cements together and there's no sort of barrier and we're all, no. everyone's ageless when- Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know I mean, I if you look at it, like take Therese for example, I mean, you know, I don't know how old Teresa is, and I'm not going to guess. <laughs> ah, sorry, Teresa. But obviously, she's not our age. And when we first started becoming, I mean, we were, we were friends with Molly before mm. Teresa. But now it's not weird that a person that we grew up singing with, Molly, we're now friends with her mum and can, yeah. you know, spend time together and we'll all go round with the Amber and everyone and have takeaways and stuff. You're right, it's completely ageless. You could have someone, whatever age. And if you're in the adult, um, if you're in the adult UVG, it just everyone clicks everyone gets yeah. on you know we were what 16 when we started probably 17 when we started going along to the adult groups yeah. just as like support and now you look at it a lot of our friends are either 10 years or five yeah. years yeah. however many we older have gone from the kids groups to the adult groups yeah so, yeah um yeah no, it's, it is mental when I do think about it, it it does shock me because obviously I never would have expected this do you know what no. I mean no I think it's very important that we do thank UVG for that because obviously mm. if and all uh, all the families that come to UVG too um yeah you know who wants to sing with their mum or their dad or their, their annoying sister yeah, you can't really say that because your mum and your sister come yeah, I, I don't mind it like and like all the family yeah. stuff and in in normal day-to-day -day situations that's just cringe no one wants to do that but I think you know we, you know, everyone has their time to shine and everyone appreciates and respects each other. Um, well, you wouldn't be a typical 14... How many typical 14-year-olds would you get that share a Victoria stage with their mum exactly. or their nan? I know. You know what I mean? It's just... It, and that's what I mean. There's, there's literally no limit on it. It, it. Whatever we do just seems to work and we just... Everything just gels together. It does. And I think, you know, we're talking about... If, from our perspective but if you look at it from everyone else mm. you, you that's the one thing or not one one thing but one of the main things that people are grateful for the most is the people yeah and the people they've met no, it definitely is and i think it's very important to highlight that because young people who may be quite new to uvg and is watching this they might think well you know what if i want to do this in the future what if you know it's, it's kind of just highlighting that it's so, it, it's, it's like a, it's a long process but I think it's so natural yeah. to be surrounded by um people who support you and respect you and have the same interests in so you don't even have to stay at UVG do you I no. mean look at look at people like Molly Evie all those people that have just seen people that have come and gone through it the same as us but at the point that we've carried on they've you know their their careers and their lives have taken them in different directions but yeah they're still friends of UVG, do you know what I mean? And they still get involved. And I, I think that's the thing as well. You know, you're not saying you have to come to UVG and you have to stay there till you're 45 years old with 10 grey hairs, but you come along, enjoy it. And the people you'll meet and the stuff you'll do along the way will be fab. <laughs> fab. fab. <laughs> what would you, Jolly good. Jolly good. What would you say to a young person who is thinking of joining UVG but is a bit nervous too because of meeting a new group of people or basically put yourself in your 
your 11 year old shoes what would you say to yourself now i'd probably be like just do it yeah obviously i'd be a bit nicer than that but part of me be like come on get in just go do it yeah. because you won't regret it and if you don't like it i think the other thing is how many people have we seen come through and ourselves as well who were nervous at the start mm. and then you've seen them grow and develop and blossom into something you know whatever like great just by taking that first step yeah exactly it's just doing it it's just walk in that room it's not all scary you can walk out we're only in a social hall you know what i mean like mm. you're not going in a room we're not locking you in there just and go in are, do it nine out of ten times there's another new person in that room with the same emotions yeah as yeah so i remember and and we've all been there we and i yeah. think that's the other thing isn't it you know typically a lot of the people that come to UVG are there for for a reason they're there to either develop their confidence or they're because they love singing but they haven't got the confidence to go with it or actually they're really confident but they want to develop their singing every single person in that room has a reason to be there and I think if you understand that about UVG then you'll fit straight in definitely no egos there's no you know we're better than you this it's not like that no do you know what I was thinking about this other day and I, you know, I was speaking to mum about it, and I said, "You know what? I've never known a time of UVG to be in competition or anyone in UVG battling against each other or anything. I just, I've never known that. And obviously, when I because I joined when I was eight, and that wasn't allowed. But I was surrounded by older people who it could have been so easy for you know teenagers to have arguments and stuff. Just that yeah, one yeah. and a half hour." was it just transformed people into like one one big group and I think yeah you know so when you walk in that room that room at Ben Anderson's got a lot to answer for when you walk into that room everything else gets left at the door yeah definitely you know? but, I, think, I think it's yeah. so easy for teenagers too to sort of doubt themselves and to get kind of like hyped up and a bit angry at different people and take it out and but when I the back at it when I've had little wobbles at UVG, it's only because I knew I trusted the people. Yeah, and, you know, could speak openly and stuff about things like that. But yeah, I mean, crying in Ben Anderson social kitchen, <laughs> we <laughs> running into the toilets. Ages fourteen to sixteen were a nightmare. <laughs> Amber, Amber sat there playing the piano, like just looking at everyone go out the room, and then Charlie's like, "Oh God, what's happening now?" <laughs> Oh, the memories. Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is funny. And obviously, Eve G are taking a break at the moment, um, which is a nightmare for us because obviously we don't see each other as much as we want to. And I mean, we usually see each other like, what, five, six times a week? Every day, like, pretty much. Every day, yeah. Month. So it's like, yeah. you know, it takes a toll on all of us. And, you know, it is like not seeing your family. And Oh, yeah. And like doing the zoom catch-ups and the videos online they just don't feel the same but it's it's so frustrating so all you want to do is just reach out and touch that person but obviously <laughs> it's like a virtual high five <laughs> or hug but um yeah no it's, it is frustrating but obviously i think everyone's just doing their best at the moment and obviously you're a manager in a college now um so that must be frustrating for you too yeah, I just want to get back at my desk. I'm at home. It's great at home, but also at the same time, I need to be. I just want my routine back. I think it was, I know it sounds stupid, but I just knew what happened. I'd go to work, I'd go to your UVG session, then I'd come home, then Wednesday we'd go to UVG, then usually go to rehearsals after, at McDonald's in the way. And then Thursday we'd do the same. We'd go to UVG, go to rehearsals after, get at McDonald's on the way home. I just miss my McDonald's and I just miss UVG. I don't even know oh, what I miss. I just miss everything. <laughs> no, I do miss UVG. I think um, it's uh, when me, you, and Amber spoke a few weeks ago. It's times like this that you realise and you, you reflect on just how much something like that has done for you, and I think also is what you miss from it. Yeah, it's it's sad to miss something, but with UVG, it's to me, I'm excited. But I'm, oh yeah, I can't wait. I'm sad that obviously I can't see everyone, but I'm excited to see how strong we how we are after this and what everyone's going to be like around each other I think everyone's going to love each other but 
amplified a bit more because I think that's the power of community music isn't it like and and the ethos that we've got as a charity is that we could be a part for however long and some people sat you know small businesses other little charities whatever are probably sat there wondering whether are we going to have anything to come back to is it going to be a flop and I remember at the start we were like I wonder if it's going to be the same are people going to come back and then we looked at it and thought okay not you know some days it might be a bit quiet on the interaction on social media but that's because people want to be in there doing it yeah, you know virtual is great and we're, we're lucky we've got it but there is no better feeling than walking into that room and getting that experience you're getting and doing those gigs that you're doing and that's what people come for and that's what people join in for and I think that's why it's just going to be 10 times better and because we're UVG and we're not going to do anything by half are we we're going to have like a big end of the show month every month <laughs> every month <laughs> wedge we're going to be there like literally yeah so in terms of like after whatever it may be after lockdown have you got any plans or anything happening at UVG that you've got planned yes yeah. we've got a new not a new group it's the Portsmouth Adult UVG group but we're relocating mm -hmm. so we're going to be based in Paul's Grove um in St Michael's Church isn't it Woo! have I got that right I think I have yeah so like, for so long ago now um yeah so we made that decision um just before lockdown really sort of random we were at a workshop weren't we that you were doing there and me and Charlie just sort of looked around and were like, wow, this is such a nice space. Like, how nice would it be to do it? And then we sort of just looked at the location and thought, there's so much going on in Portsmouth, so many great things going on in Portsmouth for music. And we've still got, obviously, the younger group there. And all of our gigs mostly are centralised in Portsmouth anyway. Yeah. And I just said to Charlie, maybe we need to come out of it a bit. You know, maybe we need to try and get more people in. I mean, you've got to have them. But in that space, we, we're going to be able to target people still from Portsmouth, Cosham, Drayton, Farlington, um, Fairham, Porchester, Paul's Grove. You know, it's just, it's just going to be nice to start fresh. Some sort of areas that kind of, obviously, like you say Portsmouth isn't that big, but it has no. so many amazing projects within it that is yeah. so busy, especially. Yeah. I think outside areas close to it, like Paul's Grove, like you said, Fairham and stuff, they don't necessarily have that opportunity or have no opportunities so i think having that sort of little base just outside portsmouth is yeah easy for people to come muck into and stuff and i think it's just it's always nice to you know we've been at st luke's for what how many years is that now like five four or five years now at st luke's and it was the most beautiful venue you know we absolutely adore it there and you know we'll probably still go back and do things there because the team at st luke's are great um but I also just think it's sometimes nice and I can't I think this relocation has probably come at the best time because we're going to come back and it's going to be fresh and it's going to be exciting and yeah, yeah. so yeah tell you if you're watching tell your friends tell your family get some pizza along so I'm not there by a lemon by myself like oh yeah <laughs> yeah yes you have one member yeah, yeah. but I'll pay you to be there you <laughs> knew like uh. yeah um, no, it'll be exciting. Yeah. No, no, very exciting. I'm very excited to branch out a bit further yeah. and to see what lies ahead for us, really, as a charity. Yeah. We can only get stronger, I think. So the only way is up. Exactly. And I think we're missing everyone loads. Yeah, I can't wait to just hug everyone. We're yeah. such huggers, aren't we? No, I think when, like, when I've seen you too. And, no, um, we're just like. <laughs> like we or anything so it's like yeah very frustrating but it will all be over soon yeah it'll be done soon we'll be there we can't on the other side we always do sunburn yeah we need to stop That's getting sunburn good. actually yeah socially distant sunburning is not ideal don't do it kids <laughs> not ideal no That's way fat 50 <laughs> all Especially right ginger yeah ginger and pale perfect perfect yeah. combo Basically, our next holiday is like Iceland or Antarctica. I think we'll still get burnt, won't we? I don't know. It's like a different type of sun, isn't it? Oh. Liv, we shouldn't start conversations like this because it's just <laughs> dangerous. 
dangerous stop be continued yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be continued <laughs> check back next week <laughs> sick so um yeah this is going to be on the UVG page um so UVG members can watch this uh, yeah. and kind of hear the whole history of UVG which is sick yeah bit for us rambling on but no just a massive you know yeah sending all my love to everyone at, yeah. at EVG and adult EVG and all our partners and people we work with and can't wait to just be back doing it all with you and yeah 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 cool well I'll let you go back to lockdown thank you mate Love I'll come it. see you in 10 minutes yeah it's <laughs> sorted it. daily walk <laughs> Okay. Uh, See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.